Hey, it's Mike here, and today a recent study compared plant-based processed meats to animal-based meats, and it has the news headlines, of course, attacking vegan stuff in general again with the Daily Mail winning as usual with vegan Impossible Burgers increased risk of diabetes and heart problems. New study finds you're better off with all caps real meat. Funny that that article didn't include this quote directly from the study. In terms of health, the cardiometabolic advantages of vegetarian and vegan diets compared to omnivorous diets are well established for references. And while these are obviously processed plant-based products that we're looking at, you know, French fries would fall into a similar category. The fear mongering that, you know, vegan products are dangerous or that these vegan products are worse than meat goes against some previous studies that we will compare to. And that's in terms of health markers as well as environmental markers in terms of what's best for the planet. So let's just get right into it. All right, here's the main study we're looking at. It's out of Singapore and it took 80 people and it split them into two groups. One got the plant-based meats and the other one got animal-based meat from their local butcher mostly. And that was a slight red flag for me because in general, people are going to be replacing processed meats with processed plant meats. You know, products like vegan burgers are designed to replace animal-based burgers, that's obvious. And you know, the study, just small detail, was online ahead of print. However, it was still peer reviewed. And it is worth mentioning that by no means were these people going vegan. They were continuing their normal diet, except swapping out what they were told to swap out, whether it was plant or animal based meat, which, you know, is not gonna get the same results. We're talking about this sort of flexitarian diet. People can still down eggs. They can still, you know, guzzle cheese because that's how you consume cheese. And because of that, we're not gonna see the big difference that we see in these trials where people go vegan, where their saturated fat goes way down. They're LDL goes way down and on and on. Anyway, there's another study that is really similar to this that I had to mention, and that is the swap meat trial. It was from a couple years ago and it was technically a higher quality study design, a randomized controlled crossover trial where they start two groups out on the two different diets and then people cross over so everybody tries both diet. So more powerful in that sense, it was also eight weeks long and the results, they saw statistically significant weight loss, drop in LDL and drop in TMAO which is another heart disease risk factor. So did this new study find any of those? Nope. And first of all, despite the headlines making it more simple, which I understand with just Impossible Burger, it is worth mentioning that this was a sort of variety of plant-based alternatives. They used Impossible Beef, Omni Meat Mints, Chickened Out Chunks, Beyond Burger, Beyond Sausage, and a little something called Little Peckers. Exactly the name we need to help insecure men give up meat. So let's go ahead and look at the news reporting for the health outcome finding, and then we'll look at the actual study, starting with the Daily Mail saying, quote, after two months, there was no difference between cholesterol in the two groups. That's true. Well, LDL trended lower by 0.12 millimoles or about five points of a drop. It wasn't statistically significant, but when you look at the actual intake of these people, that's not surprising at all because they managed to increase the saturated fat consumption from the baseline of both groups. I mean, we're talking higher in the vegan meat group, which is really strange considering that virtually every vegan out there is consuming, when we look at studies, about 40 to 50% less saturated fat. Next they say, quote, however, those who ate meat had more stable blood sugar, meaning they had a lower risk of full-blown diabetes. Yep, full-blown diabetes the moment you touch any vegan meat. I'm Wilfred Brimley and I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about diabetes. It's actually impossible for a reason. No, I'm just joking. We have a continuous glucose monitor that they put on these people, which was interesting and cool. But you know, in terms of the results of that, 18 out of the 19 blood sugar results were not statistically significantly different. Only one of all of those metrics was statistically significant. So, you know, instant diabetes. Also, the plant-based group was about 3.3 kilograms or nine pounds heavier to start. And it is a case that BMI and insulin sensitivity are well correlated. So this could explain some of those slight glucose differences. In fact, the plant group started with a worse trend in insulin resistance, but had a statistically significant 6.3% improvement in HOMA beta, which is a marker of insulin resistance slash pancreas function, an estimate that is better when higher. We're talking less diabetes risk, not covered at all by the news. This got me thinking, you know, the title said worse in terms of heart, where in the actual study or the article does it even say it's a worse 
worse for heart. Well, quote, the meat eaters also had lower blood levels of sodium than people who ate plant-based meat diets. Uh, first of all, this was just absolutely wrong and shows that they don't know how to read studies because that was actually sodium intake. There were no sodium blood levels taken. And to emphasize the horrible reporting, it actually was the case that the vegan group had statistically significantly better diastolic blood pressure just by a couple points, but still, yet they didn't actually report on that, which is funny. One of the main heart disease risk factors better in the plant-based meat group, crickets. But this is how they make the heart disease connection. They say, well, high blood sugar can actually damage blood vessels, which can cause you to develop heart disease. But again, uh, 18 out of 19 glucose markers, not different. Anyway, we have some things here that also didn't make it into the headlines. There were some other improvements in that plant meat group. Some of them weren't statistically significant though. For example, a one third lower final C-reactive protein or inflammation level, which is pretty notable. However, not statistically significant, which brings me to again, because it wasn't a crossover and it wasn't that large of a study. You know, things that truly could have been improved might have not been picked up statistically. Other studies show that a vegan diet, for example, lowers C-reactive protein. Another one that was really worth mentioning is that that fiber intake in the plant meat group went up by 50%. And that was, you know, essentially double what the meat group was eating. And as we've seen from meta-analyses like this one, higher consumption of dietary fiber significantly decreases the risk of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular-related mortality, and cancer-related mortality. Another little red flag, it's not huge, but the adherence or compliance that was self-reported was like eight or nine points lower in the plant meat group than the meat meat group. And you know that could mean an even worse adherence than people were actually willing to say, which of course is going to you know fuzzy the results a little bit because they would be eating more meat. Now what's the conflicts of interest situation here? Well, at first I was like, oh my gosh, this said right there that it's funded by this company, company named Pinduo Duo, which appears to be an online food retailer, which, you know, Wikipedia straight up says, you know, they push traditional agricultural products. Maybe they're trying to keep, you know, the meat industry in business. However, in 2022, they also started selling Beyond Meat itself on there. And yeah, this study did start before that. Maybe the motivations were different, but then again, the study did have that quote saying, yeah, vegetarian and vegan diets have been shown to be heart healthier. I don't think they would put that in a study that was trying trying to smear vegan stuff. And then I should also say that the swap meat trial did have Beyond Meat funding, which really is worth mentioning. However, it also had NIH grant funding and they took a lot of steps to separate any of that influence. They say, you know, they had a statistical analysis plan they submitted to the government and that main analysis was conducted by a third party who had no involvement with the study design, blah, 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 and was blinded to all participants. However, no such claim was made about the Pinduoduo Duo study. That's a fun word to say. And lightning fast, I of course have to mention that there are other health effects that they didn't measure in this. For example, people are likely replacing processed meats and red meats, which are class 1A and 2A carcinogens, according to the WHO, with these animal-based meats that are not carcinogenic. You know, they didn't test for anything like that, yet all the fear mongering around this is going to lead people to continue eating literal carcinogens instead of plant-based alternatives, which are often just transition foods to healthier ones anyway. And then finally, of course, we have the environmental effects and these vary depending on the reports and you know, some of them are paid for by industry. But we can see from the Good Food Institute that plant-based meat emits about 90% less greenhouse gas emissions than conventional meat and uses between like 70 and 99% less water. And you're also not directly purposely killing a sentient animal so that you can have a burger anyway. In the end, yeah, it's clear that these are you know, quite processed foods. I do think that people exaggerate the negatives of some of the ingredients. I do think that the saturated fat, the sodium, et cetera, especially are not good, but these are things that are usually in processed meat in even higher amounts often. And looking to that swap meat study, both of those studies were including Beyond Meat, yet in the swap meat one, which was a better design, lower body weight, lower LDL, lower TMAO. And I would have loved to see another version of this study where they did things like black bean and lentil burgers. I know they're not as convincing of replacements, but there's no way you could have hid 
any difference between those groups at the end, obviously between the fiber, the lower saturated fat and all of that, markers would have done better at eight weeks. But I still do have problems with like how that insulin was higher in the plant-based group in the beginning and how just like virtually none of the glucose markers were actually different and yet the results were way over-reported by the media, which is par for the course for the daily fail anyway. And as usual, let me know down below what you think about all of this and this study and all the reports. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.